In the follow-up to um, the sentencing of Alex Belfield, um, first of all, I, 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 I should repeat, I am sorry um, about the length of his sentence. I'm sorry about his sentencing. I'm sorry that it's even come to this. Uh, this is someone who I think, if we were going to write a Greek tragedy, he would be an excellent example. This is somebody with the most extraordinary hubris. And somebody that I was very wary of, having fallen foul of him some time ago. I know how dangerous people can be on the internet. I know how, I, I, I know how um, extraordinarily powerful people can feel when they're sitting on their own, churning out information into the vacuum that is the social media platform. It's very liberating and it's very dangerous. And I think uh, Alex Belfield was as much um, a victim of his own success as he was also a victimizer of others. So I am sorry, it's awful to see a person of such talent and um, it's awful, yes, it's talent and intelligence brought down by stupidity and obsessive behaviour. Now, as for stalking, I remember, well, I, <laughs> cer certain, certainly um, once I'd been on the circle, I have uh, I found myself having photographs taken at most inopportune times. On one occasion, I was, I was going, through, um, going through my phone to try and find out, um, uh, to try and work out um, when the next train was. And I was sitting on a, on a bench outside the V&A and I suddenly heard this click which sounded, which, which sounded like a sort of camera or a, or, 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 or a mobile phone or something. I think it really was a proper camera. And someone had taken a, a, a paparazzi photograph of me. I eventually found it on the internet. It was extraordinary. Um, and so I understand that side of it. In the dim past, I had a I had a real life stalker. I remember once it was pouring with rain. I heard some sort of fiddling on the front door, and I opened the front door to find my stalker literally standing on the doorstep. How had this person even worked out what my address was? I don't know. But it went on for months, and the only way I wriggled out of it was by going abroad. I think stalking can change somebody's life and if you're a victim of stalking it can feel incredibly oppressive you just don't know where the stalker is going to turn up now in the days where you had physical stalking exclusively that was oppressive enough now we have stalking on the internet as well and people can sort of get into your minds they can get into your homes I can well understand why people felt abused and threatened by Alex. Alex, even the, even the little bit that I knew of Alex was of this person who was acerbic and uh, aggressive in an unnecessary way. For humour, why would one do that? I don't know. But he was funny. He's not the only acerbic and aggressive comic out there. There are others, and I think um, it's a lesson uh, and a warning to people that uh, you know we have to be very careful. Um, just how far does it go? And at what point does it become so personal that one can't... Um, that, uh, that uh, one's victims feel oppressed. I don't know the answer to this, and certainly Alex Belfield did not know the answer to this. Uh, so was it stupidity or was it arrogance that set him on this course? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe nobody will know. But should we feel sorry for somebody who is being sent to prison? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I think um, Alex will have a very difficult time in prison. 
I'm not proposing to be a sort of Lord Longford here, um, but uh, I am sorry to see somebody of, as I said, great intelligence and great talent brought low by stupidity.